Hi everyone, welcome to Path DC for channel. So today we are going to learn about necrosis. Okay, so it is very important question for both undergraduate and also as a postgraduate. So here in this class, I would simplify what are the things uh, if the necrosis is asked in your exam, you can write certain things so that you can score higher in your exam. So before that, if you want to see many lectures of uh, pathology to understand the concept, please try to subscribe my channel and also get notified. So coming to the definition of the necrosis, so we saw in the previous class any cell which undergo injury, it will either undergo adaptation or it will go to cell death. Okay, so here they are saying the same concept. So it is a pathological process of an accidental cell death that occurs as a consequence of severe injury. So this is necrosis. So next moving on to the characteristics. So what are the characteristics of a disease? So for example, if there is particular diagnosis I am going to make for this patient. So there should be certain checklist that this feature should present. So I am going to diagnose this like that. For necrosis we have some characteristics. What are those? The first one is a denaturation of cellular protein. The second one is a leakage of cellular contents through the damaged membrane. And finally there will be a local inflammatory reaction due to damps. Damp is nothing but your damage associated molecular pattern. So the finally, in, it will lead to your enzymatic digestion of the cell. So these are the four key features of your necrosis. So next, moving on to the lab detection of necrosis. So how, how it is very helpful in identifying the disease, it will uh, come in the later. Okay. So the first, if there is any cell that undergoes into necrosis, there will be a damage of your plasma membrane. So once there is a damage of plasma membrane, what will happen? There will be a leakage of your intracellular protein. So from the cell, if the membrane is damaged, then there will be a leakage of your intracellular proteins. Okay. Once the proteins come into the circulation, you can be detected that by using your blood or serum levels. So how it will be very helpful in detecting your diagnosis? There is a few examples. So if there is a myocardial infarction, it will damage your cardiac muscles. Once the muscle is damaged, it will lead to the membrane damage. Okay, once the membrane is damaged, the intracellular, your iso uh, enzymes, that is your CKMB and the troponin or the iso enzymes, which will be released into the circulation. So these are used as a biomarker for your myocardial infarction. So that's why for all the myocardial infarction patient, we'll see the troponin I and also the CKMB for how far is the infarct, right? So that is very helpful in aiding to the diagnosis of the disease. So next, or there is another example where if there is any stimulus, like for example, an alcoholic is a chronic alcoholic, it will damage your hepatocytes. So once the hepatocyte is damaged, it will damage your membrane. Okay, then it will lead to the elevation of your transaminases. Okay, so particularly these are very helpful and used as a biomarkers for detecting your diseases. So that's what they're trying to say. So next coming to the morphology. Cell changes are divided into cytoplasm and nucleus. We saw each cell has cytoplasm and nucleus. So we will see about the cytoplasmic first, then moving to the nuclear features. So in cytoplasmic, uh, there will be eosinophilia due to the loss of RNA. And there will be a uh, glassy homogeneous appearance due to the loss of glycogen. And there will be a more eaten appearance due to digestion of the cytoplasmic organelles. And finally, there will be myelin figures that is nothing but the deposition of a phospholipids in a whirl pattern. And finally, it will be digested by your phagocytized by your cells. And that will degrade free fatty acids. So once this free fatty acids will combine with your calcium and it forms a dystrophic calcification. So these are the cytoplasmic changes in the necrosis. So next moving on to the nuclear features. So they appear as three patterns. So what are those? There is a karyolysis, pycnosis and karyorexis. What is karyolysis? It is a basophilic nucleus. Usually nucleus appear as blue color in histology, right? So the basophilic nucleus will try to fade away when the necrosis is very severe so that's what they are saying as karyolysis the pycnosis means there will be shrinkage of nuclear so your nucleus will become like a small dot okay and then karyorexis means there will be a fragmentation of your nuclei so one nuclei will be fragmented into multiple numbers so these are your cytoplasmic 
and nuclear features. So here is a diagram where you can see the light microscopic findings and also the electron microscopic findings. So here you can see the above diagram shows you the nuclear features and the below diagram shows you the cytoplasmic features. So the nuclear pattern we already discussed there is a three patterns one is karyolysis, the other one is pycnosis and karyorexis. So we saw about each in detail. And then coming to the cytoplasmic detail, so there will be eosinophilia due to the loss of RNA and more detail in appearance, it will be due to the cytoplasmic organal digestion. And then moving on to the electron microscopy, we saw uh, there will be amorphous debris cytoskeleton, pycnotic nucleus, myelin figures and leakage of contents. And ultimately there will be an inflammatory reaction surrounding the tissue. This is the one which is very important to distinguish from apoptosis. So in necrosis there will be a leakage of your intracellular protein. So there will be inflammatory response. Whereas in apoptosis it will be completely absent. This is the key feature to distinguish between necrosis and apoptosis microscopically. So uh, electron microscopy we saw there will be a discontinuous in the plasma and uh, organelle and marked dilatation of mitochondria will be there. Myelin figures will be there. So next moving on to the types of necrosis. So the first one is coagulative necrosis, liquefactory necrosis, caseous necrosis, fat necrosis, fibrinoid necrosis, gammatous necrosis and gangrenous necrosis. So we will see about each type and then finally we will have a classic example for each type. So the first one is a coagulative necrosis. So C for C. It is the most common type where it preserves the underlying architecture. That is a key point. Okay, In coagulative necrosis, you will have the architectural preservant, but the nuclear and the cytoplasmic details will be lost. Okay, The mostly and it mostly affects the solid organ except the brain. And the mechanism is whenever there is an ischemic injury, it will coagulate both your structural protein and the enzymes and thus it will prevent your proteolysis. So here is a classical example of egg where the protein will be present in the albumin and finally when it boils, it will lead to the white solid, your coagulation will be happened. Okay. So morphologically, what are the organs it will affect? Heart, kidney, spleen and limb. And grossly, the organ will appear very dry, pale, yellow, form and wedge shaped necrosis will be seen. So microscopically I told you a number of times there will be a preservation of your outline architecture but your nuclear and cytoplasmic details will be completely lost. And there will be a karyolysis, leukocytes will be there, inflammation will be there, phagocytosis will be there. So here is a diagram uh, of the gross picture you can see the kidney shows a wedge shaped uh, necrosis and in the histologically you can see the normal area present over here has the glomeruli and also the normal tubules whereas on the other side you can see the infected area with very uh, mild preserved architecture is there but there is no cytoplasmic or nuclear details which is present here. So next moving on to your liquefactive necrosis. So this is most commonly it affects the CNS and the abscess will be the most common thing. So what are the organism responsible? Staphylococci, streptococci, E. coli and fungus. And the mechanism is mainly due to autolysis. Okay. That is by your hydrolytic enzymes. So grossly it will appear like a viscous fluid with a liquefied center with a necrotic debris. So they are seeing in the brain and also in the abscess. Abscess it will appear like a pus or purulent exudate. Whereas in brain it is due to the rich of hydrolytic enzymes and your lipids. So here is a gross picture where you can see there is a uh, liquefactive necrosis along with the infarct in the brain. So next coming to the microscopy. It will be pus with the liquefied necrotic cell debris and dead leukocytes and macrophages will be seen. The third one is caseous necrosis. What is caseous necrosis? It's a combination of your coagulative necrosis and your liquefactive necrosis. Where the cause is, whenever the term caseous comes to your mind, you should remember of tuberculosis. Okay, you should remember of tuberculosis that is mediated by a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. So the mechanism is usually all the dead cells will try to disintegrate. So these will not be completely resolved by your digestion. So there will be a few things which is left over that will persist as an amorphous coarsely granular eosinophilic debris that is nothing but your caseous necrosis. Coming to the morphology, grossly the organ will appear white and yellow and soft and friable granular material with a dry cheesy like necrosis will be seen. So here is a lung where it shows the cavity with a cheesy like necrosis. So microscopically how it appears 
collection of a fragmenter or a lysed cells which will be very easy no feeling and you can see the granuloma with a dystrophic calcification what is granuloma there are various central cascading necrosis and you can see surrounded by the epithelial clusters with the multinucleated jain cells that is your lang hand jain cells and surrounded by the rim of small mature lymphocytes and your fibroblasts so this collection is called as a granuloma so next coming to the fat necrosis they are divided into two that is your enzymatic and traumatic enzymatic the classic example is acute pancreatitis whereas the traumatic wherever the bulk of the tissue is more like breast and thigh and these things okay so where it mimics the carcinoma radiologically so what is the pathogenesis behind acute pancreatitis there will be a leakage of your phospholipases into the peritoneal cavity from the pancreas so once that is leakage then there will be a hydrolysis of your triglycerides so that will lead to the liberation of your free fatty acid so that finally goes and combines with a calcium and it forms a dystrophic calcification like a fat necrosis okay so morphologically gross wise it appears as a opaque and uh, irregular chalky white appearance okay so here is a picture gross picture where you can see there is a chalky white uh, fat necrosis is seen so next moving on to the microscopy it will have a shadow outlines with some uh, pale looking fat cells and also the basophilic calcium deposits and there will be acute inflammation so next coming to the fibrinoid necrosis so fibrin fibrinoid means it is a fibrin like okay so it usually occurs in arterial wall where it appears like a pink fibrin staining and it's basically the composition of the fibrin is your immune complexes and your proteins okay the causes are vasculitis malignant hypertension ascof bodies like rheumatic heart disease hyperacute transplantation rejection so here you can see in this diagram there is a central lumen filled with your rbcs and your wbcs surrounded by the fibrinoid necrosis across the vessel wall microscopically you can see as a brightly eosinophilic hyaline deposits in the vessel wall where the classic stain is ptah and the next one is agamatous necrosis where it will appear like a firm and rubbery clinically and it's usually associated with a tertiary syphilis and the last one is your gangrenous necrosis so what is gangrenous necrosis it is a massive necrosis with super added putrefaction so the types are dry and wet so here the dry gangrene the cause is mainly due to arterial obstruction uh, the classic example is atherosclerosis of the vessel wall so site is limb foot and toe morphologically the gross will appear as a dry shrunken dark brown mummified and there will be a line of demarcation whereas microscopically it will appear like a coagulation necrosis demarcation will have a granulation tissue and inflammatory cells so here is a picture where you can see the line of de uh, demarcation will be healthy tissue and the adjoining tissue So next coming to your wet gangrene what are the cause of wet gangrene it is mainly due to venous blockage and uh, the classic example are intussusception and valvulus hernia so here the sites are mostly the hollow viscous organ like your bowel and lung and uh, next morphologically there will be a gross and microscopy gross it will appear like a soft swollen cold and black no demarcation will be there whereas in microscopy you can see more number of neutrophils so what is the difference between dry gangrene and wet gangrene so dry gangrene is usually the common site is limbs whereas in the wet gangrene is bowel an example of this is the atherosclerosis where this is due to valvulus and intussusception and the etiological factor mainly the dry is due to arterial obstruction whereas the wet is due to venous obstruction and the rate of obstruction will be slow in dry whereas in wet it will be very abrupt gross picture it will be dry mummification and black in uh, dry gangrene whereas it will be swollen and soft and moist in wet gangrene whereas the line of demarcation will be present in dry and there will be no clear cut de demarcation will be present in wet the spread will be very slow in dry where it will be rapid in wet and the prognosis will be very fair in dry where it will be poor due to septicemia in your wet so gas gangrene is mainly caused due to clostridium perfringens so finally coming to the fate of necrosis what will happen once the cell is undergoing injury into the necrosis it will either persist or it will go to the digestion by the enzymes so if that is happened it will be replaced by a myelin figures 
so those will be phagocytized by your leukocytes so that will generate your ffa that is free fatty acids so these free fatty acids will finally combine with the calcium and minerals and it will lead to dystrophic calcification okay so this is all about necrosis so whenever they ask you the question about necrosis in your exam so what are you going to write first about the definition then moving on to the characteristic lab detection of necrosis then you give some two example then the gross and the morphology where the cytoplasmic changes and nuclear changes you will be explaining clearly and then the diagram and then electron microscopy then coming to what are the types of necrosis so the first one is your coagulative necrosis and the next one is your liquefactive necrosis and next is caseous necrosis fat necrosis fibrinoid necrosis then we saw about gammatous necrosis and gangrenous necrosis and finally the fate of necrosis so this is all about you have to write when a uh, question is asked about necrosis so this is the summary i hope so you guys learned something uh, from my lecture so uh, until then we will see the next class with some other new concept thank you all